Climate change will have a major impact on the towering redwood and Douglas fir forests of Northern California. Hey, Peter, on rope, but not moving yet. Emily Lim is a fourth year graduate student at UC Berkeley. Lim studies how plants use water. She's climbing into the canopy today to check a sap sensor that monitors how much water the tree is using. Her particular focus is on how the forest deals with the dry California summer. So understanding the changes in water use throughout the year is critical. Redwoods have a really tough job. They have to extract water out of the ground and bring it all the way up to their leaves. That can be 70, even 100, 115 meters in some of the tallest redwood trees. And they do that because water is constantly evaporating. We call it transpiration. It's constantly leaving the leaves at the top of the canopy. And that creates tension in the water column. And that tension keeps bringing the water up out of the ground. When a fog event comes in, the wetting of the canopy actually stops that stress and that tension. It relieves it because they take some of that water in. And so the tension eases not only from the top, but also from the bottom. The wood of the redwood tree is built to have specialized cells that help the water move under tension without that water column breaking. And water is a phenomenal material that actually has a lot of strength in itself. And so it can be stretched quite a bit without breaking. To determine where plants are getting their water, Lim clips small branches and brings them back to the Berkeley campus for testing. Water has an inherent signature that we call the stable isotope composition of the water, and it reflects where the water came from. So we can actually tease apart whether water came from fog or it came from the ground. Does it reflect winter rains or deep groundwater? And when we sample plant tissue, we can use a mixing model and determine what proportion came from which source. I became interested in specifically how fog brings needed water to the redwood forest during the summer months here in California when we don't get rains typically. I wanted to take a closer look at the plants growing on the forest floor in the understory to understand how they are also using the fog water. The plant diversity in the understory is what's most likely going to be affected with climate change. The forest canopy is a major control factor on what happens throughout the forest. The canopy sets the stage for what the understory sees. It not only changes light levels, but it intercepts the fog water when it moves in off the ocean and drips the water into the understory. So understanding how water enters the canopy and drips to the understory is an integral part of understanding how all the plants in the redwood forest function. But plants have to have light in order to make sugars so that they have enough food. But to be able to do that, plants in the understory have to have large leaves, and large leaves inherently lose a lot of water. So plants in the understory must have a lot of water, and they are going to be very impacted by any change in water availability. If they don't have enough water, they won't be able to make the type of leaves that they need to survive in the shade. Lim is particularly interested in the sword ferns on the forest floor. Sword fern is the plant in the redwood forest that's most able to take in water directly through its leaves. When a fog event comes in and wets the understory, that plant absorbs a lot of that water, and it responds strongly to it physiologically. And this plant not only is taking in a lot of water, but it also loses a lot of water. So it desperately depends on this water resource here in the fog belts in California. When I come to study sword fern, one of the first things that I do is to figure out how hydrated the plants are, to find out if they're under a lot of water stress right now at the time point when I'm measuring them. And to do that, I take a small segment of the leaf and I clip it off, and I'm able to measure how much water is in the leaf based on the time when I cut it. And by knowing how hydrated they are, I understand if they've had enough water in the last few days, last few weeks, and I can I compare how that level changes over the course of the fog season. Lim's work has revealed surprising information about how the plants use water through the year. In the redwood forests that experience regular wetting from fog events, we find that sword fern becomes more and more hydrated with the more fog that it receives. It's actually the most water stress in the spring after rain events have stopped for the winter. 
But then as summer comes and fog comes rolling in off the ocean over and over throughout the summer, the plant becomes more and more hydrated. And often at the end of summer, when other plants are very water stressed, sword fern, because it's been using that resource, is extremely well hydrated and performing well. Fog is a difficult climate phenomenon to predict. We have a good idea of when it will occur over short time scales, but it seems over longer trends, it's been declining. And we don't know why that is. Over the last 50 years, fog frequency has been decreasing. If the redwood forest receives less water, it's going to have a lot more trouble maintaining the life diversity that it has now. We may see a change in species composition. And so I'm interested in understanding how the dominant plants in the redwood forest respond to water. If we know how much water they need to survive, we'll be able to predict if conditions change and they receive less water, whether they'll be able to continue to live the way they are and function the way they are now. <laughs>